This is the 2025 Honda CRV Hybrid Sport Touring. Is it the best hybrid crossover SUV? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm at Holmes Honda to give you the particulars on this model and help you to answer that question that I phrased in the title of the video. As always, if you want to know more, check out the link down in the description of the video. The exterior color on this model is Canyon River Blue. It's going to have a black interior and as we look here on the front end, you're gonna have plenty of LED lighting, LED headlights, LED daytime running lights. You have your active air curtain right here, allowing air to flow through the front end. That helps to improve your aerodynamics. Hopefully you can see the daylight through there. And an interesting combination here, we have some gloss black. We'll also have some matte black and some gray and silver trim around this area right here. You will also find Honda sensing here. That's going to include adaptive cruise control, collision mitigation, braking, road departure mitigation, lane keeping assist, and traffic jam assist. Here's the remote. Everything you expect to see here, lock, unlock, remote start, and you can open and close your power hands-free tailgate. Also have your panic button right there. This model is going to come standard in all-wheel drive at this particular trim level. Let's talk about tire and wheel size. Two 35 on the width, a 55 series sidewall wrapped around the sporty looking gloss black 19 inch wheels. And that's one thing you'll find here with this particular trim level is that it does have a little bit more of a sporty look to it, hence the trim level. Sport touring, body, or excuse me, gloss black, mirror caps, turn signal indicators built in, power adjustable side view mirrors, they're heated and the turn signal indicators are built in. Now, the only thing missing here is the fact that they are not power folding, but they are manually folding. No big deal where that's concerned. And by the way, you do have a proximity key with the walk away feature. And when you walk up to the vehicle, you can lock it, unlock it. There's different settings you can use for how all of that works and functions. Roof rails up top. We're gonna finish things off with the tailgate spoiler, as Honda calls it. I call that a rear roof spoiler, but there are different names for it. And LED tail lights. The only lighting missing on this model is going to be fog lights. Some people wish it had fog lights, but it does not. And right here, the sticker that tells all about the capabilities of this power hands-free tailgate. And all you have to do is just kick your foot under that area right there. And if that doesn't work, Here's what you need to do. In fact, I'm gonna show you real fast. Let me close this down real quick. We'll get back to this area shortly and I'll give you all the specs on what you can expect to find cargo space wise and all that good stuff. But I wanted to get in here into the infotainment screen. If you go back there and for some reason you can't get your power tailgate to open, come right here into your infotainment screen and we're gonna to go to power tailgate setup and it's pretty easy to figure out. Hands-free access or hands-free access function right there. Obviously, it would be set to off if it's not working. Set it to on and you should be okay. If you're planning on buying a CRV for the 2025 model year and you're saying, Tom, I don't want a turbocharged engine, what are my options? The only option you have is to go hybrid because you have a combination of a naturally aspirated two liter four cylinder and dual electric motors, 204 horsepower and 247 on the torque, made it to an eCVT. And one thing I'm surprised we haven't seen more of, at least as of right now, the struts that help to open and keep the hood up. Not seeing that on other Honda models as of right now for 23, 24, 25, but we'll see what comes in the future. Some people not too worried about that. And how about our MPGs? 40 city, 34 highway, 37 combined, and 2.7 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. You have capless fuel fill, and when you fill up, you're filling up a 14 gallon gas tank. How about available cargo space? Well, being that this is the hybrid model, you're gonna find a small change between the non-hybrid and hybrid versions of the CRV. 36.6 to 76.5 cubic feet is what we have here. The difference between this and a non-hybrid version has to do with the floor right here because you can actually change its position. You can't do that here for obvious reasons. If you go with a non-hybrid version, you're looking at 36.6 to 39.3 to 76.5 cubic feet of cargo space. 
There is a little bit of space on each side back here behind the fender wells for a little more storage. You've got your hangers right here and some interior lighting to help things out. And you can see that I folded the rear seats down to maximize cargo space. That's very easy to deal with. And getting back to this power tailgate right here, if you need to change the position on this, all you do is pull it down. You can see that it says hold to set height. You just hold this button down until you hear all the beeps. And now when I open that back up, it's gonna open to the point where I set it. And resetting that is no big deal. All you have to do is just push it back to the position or move it to the position that you want. Repeat the process with the button and you're set. On the door panels for your rear doors, quite a bit of space as far as the armrest goes. When I put my arm on there, it feels pretty comfortable. And a door bin right here. More of a bottle holder than a door bin, but there is some space back here if you're not using this area, obviously that's additional space for whatever will fit. And one of the common questions that people tend to ask, do the rear seat backs recline? Here's the answer. I have the left side here back as far as it will go, the right side over there in the more upright position. And you will also find the latch system here. And the thing I like about that, for those of you who have kids that are still in car seats, is that you don't have anything at all to keep up with. You just latch in and you're set. You don't have to take any kind of cover off or move anything out of the way. That's not too bad. And one rear seat pocket on the right-hand side right there on the passenger seat and air conditioning vents as well as two USB options on the rear of the center console. And we'll work our way over here. Here's what your black leather in leather trimmed interior looks like. You're gonna have some contrast stitching there that does help to make things stand out and break things up a little bit more. And something, number one, I'd like to see in more vehicles, and I'm surprised that Honda doesn't do this with more of their vehicles, is the positioning of the cup holders. And you might say, what difference does that make? Well, normally they're par parallel to each other instead of vertical like this. The difference is that when they're parallel and there's a bottle in each side, well, it's kind of hard to use that as an armrest unless you just put your elbow up there. In this case, I can use that as an armrest no matter what. That's a nice feature. We'll also find the sunroof here. It is not panoramic, but you do have the shade right there and it does tilt and slide open. And I'll let you see the animated graphics as they come up, just to show you a little bit of what is here when you get into the interior. And what about the sticker price? $42,150. For those of you who made it to this point in the video and you see people asking in the comments what the sticker price is or ask why I didn't give it, you can tell them appropriately that they simply should have watched the entire video. Over here on the driver's side door panel, we do have a larger door bin than what we had in the rear. One touch down and one touch up. With all four windows, you can lock or unlock those windows. There's your lock and unlock button for the doors, and you can control everything for your power side view mirrors right there. Two settings for seat memory, and then you can control the power tailgate and turn traction control on and off right there. This lever, when you drop that, you can adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel and you can go in and make changes to the instrument cluster if you want to as far as how that looks and what's displayed on the screen we'll also find steering wheel mounted controls and you can control your front and rear window wipers right there as well as the exterior lighting on the vehicle front and rear lights and even use that to turn on your blinkers and let people around you know what your intentions are before you change lanes or whatever you're doing, turning in front of them, whatever. When I say turning in front of them, I don't mean turning out of a parking lot onto the road. No, I'm not trying to give you bad advice. Some of you don't need that because you already do it. Yes, it's okay to laugh. And right here, these are not actually shifter paddles on the hybrid version of these CRVs. That's for adjusting your regenerative braking. And some people will tell me that the nine inch touchscreen is too small for the Honda Pilot. Do you think it's better suited here in the CRV? One way or another, it's very easy to learn and very easy to use. Nice graphics there. You can see built-in navigation, but you can wirelessly pair your smartphone and use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. There is your power flow meter, so that helps to see what's going on there. And I already showed you what was here essentially with your vehicle settings, but you can see it's very easy to figure out what you need to do when you need to do it. Whatever you need to change or see, 
that's easy to do. You can also go into general settings and there's a lot more you can do there. Very simple to deal with. One thing I personally would like to see come to the CRV in the future, especially on the top trim level right here, is the fact that you need multiple camera views beyond what we have. It's nice to have the multi-view rear view camera, but why not offer those same views that you can get on the Pilot Trail Sport and Pilot Elite, where you can see overhead from the side view mirrors literally everywhere. Dual zone climate control, only heated seats. I would also like to see ventilated seats or cooled seats, depending on what you want to call that. And our connectivity for the driver and passenger, you can see the USB options right there. Also the 12 volt power outlet and the wireless charging pad. It looks like there might be enough room to maybe move that over a little bit and add a second wireless charging pad on this side for the passenger. Just my thoughts, not necessarily a big deal. And your shifter, probably don't need to tell you too much about that. And then we have our drive mode selector right here. What are the driving modes? Let's take a look at that. We have normal, econ, sport, or excuse me, snow. Sport's going to be up here. I'm jumping ahead of myself. There is sport. So those are your driving modes. Pretty easy to deal with. Power parking brake, brake hold mode. You can see your cup holders right there. And the center console that doubles as an armrest. And there is quite a bit of space in there. You do have the removable tray right here if you want to use that. There are two different positions or you could just leave that out all together if you wanted to do that. And the upper console offers a few more options and features. As you can see, this is the control for opening and closing that power sunroof I talked about earlier. And there is your sunglass holder. And what's it like to drive this 25 CRV hybrid sport touring? I think it has a good, comfortable ride quality. Now, something to keep in mind about that is that I'm used to driving a 2024 GMC 2500, so the truck doesn't necessarily ride the smoothest of anything you can get out there on the road and drive. So in my estimation, I'm going to say that it has a good ride quality here because of what I'm used to experiencing. That's one thing you have to consider with these videos when it comes to the test drive is whoever's making the video, whether we realize it or not, we're filtering our experience through what we're used to. We all do that. It just depends on what we're driving, test driving, whatever the case is. You might hop in and say, it really is very smooth. It's smoother than you made it out to sound. You didn't really make a big deal about it. Or it might not be as smooth as, as I think it is. Where you're concerned, you might say the opposite. That's why you really need to get out and test drive these vehicles for yourself. But I'll still pass along what I can as best as I can to you. One thing I really like here is the fact that the steering is very tight. I'm not going to say it's sports car tight but it is very tight. It's very responsive to the touch of your hand. It doesn't feel loose to the point to where you could oversteer easily if you weren't paying attention. So that's always nice to have. Plus, for those of you who live in an area where you're dealing with snow and ice, however many months out of the year you might, well, this is a great option for you, not only because it's all wheel drive, but you do have your snow mode. That's always a good thing. And speaking of driving modes, I am currently driving in sport mode, and while I'm just driving through this residential area to get to this area, I was on a road where the speed limit is twice what it is here from 25 to 50 miles per hour. And sport mode does wake this CRV up a little bit. It doesn't make a massive difference, but you can definitely tell a little bit of a difference offering a little bit more of a sporty driving experience. I'm not going to tell you that you're going to experience neck snapping performance or anything like that, but one way or another, it does make a little bit of a noticeable difference. And when it comes to technology, I really touched on this earlier, the technology in these Honda vehicles, no matter which Honda you choose to buy, is very easy to learn and very easy to use. And so you don't have to worry about a steep learning curve where that is concerned. It actually works very well. And when you need to get down the road, well, you can, no matter if you're in sport mode or in normal mode, it gets on down the road. And one thing I'll say here, I know a lot of people cringe when they hear ECVT. Try it out. Drive it for yourself and then make a decision. You might be surprised that what Honda has here is very well behaved. It's not typical of a CVT based on my experience with a lot of other vehicles, even some of the older models of Hondas from the last few years. 
I think Honda's made some positive changes where that's concerned. And really just an easy vehicle to drive. Its size is perfect for big city driving, especially if you live in a congested area where there's a lot of traffic and a lot of people parking in parking spaces that make it tight. Maybe you have tight parking where you live. Some cities do as far as trying to fit as many vehicles as possible into parking lots. There's a lot of advantages here to the CRV, but I am curious to know for those of you watching, is there something you wish Honda had added to this version of the CRV that is not here? So tell me what you think about the 2025 Honda CRV Hybrid Sport Touring. Is it the best hybrid crossover SUV? Tell me what your thoughts are. And don't forget about that link down in the description of the video if maybe you want to come into Homes Honda and buy this model or maybe check anything else out that they have in inventory. They have quite a bit here right now. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends here at Homes Honda for loaning me this CRV for the day and a special thanks to each and every one of you for giving me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.